Hi, welcome back to ODE YouTube channel. My name is Paulo and I'm here again to present you another pen that was sent to me by Apubum. Thank you for sending the pen for review. It is alone, it will be sent back, unfortunately, because this is a nice one but quite expensive, but we'll get on that a little bit later. You can check the link for this pen on the comment on the description section below and i will ask you right now please don't forget to hit the like button if you do like it and very important to subscribe my channel so the pen i'm showing you today is a pen that comes inside this yellow box and it is a jacques herbin pen it comes with this box it comes with this cloth uh, bag and the pen is this one. I'm not showing it inside the box because it has ink inside and it has to be stored with the cap here, the barrel there and there the converter. So it's, it's not good for storing the pen when it is already inked. It comes with instructions on how to use the pen and also comes with a little catalog in color, which is not that common in such a small thing, uh, for Jacques Herbin products. Now, let's close this box and let's go on to the pen. And the pen is this. This is a very beautiful thing, in my opinion. The pen is called Jacques Herbin Caravelle Ebony. And the pen has several very nice features. Let me start to show them to you. First, the clip, the top of the cap, the cap band and the end of the barrel are made of metal. The rest of the pen, the cap and the barrel, the rest of the cap and the barrel are made of wood. Yes, this is wood. It doesn't look like, it almost looks like uh, a resin, but it's not. It's very well polished, it's very dark. It is ebony wood, so it is almost black. Now let's take a look at the parts of the pen and the design. The shape is this kind of shape. It uh, tapers down on both ends. It has a metal central band that has nothing engraved there. Just very reflective and very prone to get fingerprints. The same happens with the clip that has no information there but it is very good to use because it is spring-loaded. You can do it like this and it will open enough to be used, but if you want to open more, you can do like this and it works well. It has a top of the cap that is shiny and the top of the barrel, also the same thing, but no inscriptions, no engraving. So if you look at the pen like this, you will not know which brand the pen is, except there, that little detail that the camera doesn't focus, that says Jacques Herbin, Paris, and then the date, the 1670. So, very, very discreet. If you look at it, you will not find the branding, but it is there, hidden on the lip of that cap top. Now, let's take a look at the inside of the pen. The cap unscrews. Let me show you how many turns. So, one turn, two turns, two turns and three quarters maybe. It has a long metal section that will get fingerprints everywhere. I don't find it slippery at all. It is quite fat so good to hold the pen. It has these threads that are on the sharper side, but you will not hold the pen there, at least I don't, so it makes no difference to me. The step from the threads to the barrel is very small and it has, let me try to show it to you, maybe I have to zoom in a little, and here we have, it has a Jacques Herbin 
nib with a little boat there, Paris, 1670, and then below it says 18 karat gold, uh, 18 karats, 750, and then M nib. So the nib has this engraving, which is quite nice. I find it interesting. I think this is a beautiful nib, different from what we are used to see in terms of engravings. And it has that uh, boat, or that ship, uh, below the Jacques Herbin. And that ship is a uh, caravel, or, uh, and caravel is a, um, is a boat that was used in the, in the Portuguese expansion uh, about 500 years ago. So this pen, although it is French, it has some uh, connections to, to Portugal, yeah. so I think. It has this fee that I'm not sure if it is ebony or plastic. Uh, Ebonite or plastic, sorry, and then it has some a strange feature here. You unscrew the barrel to get to the to the converter, and it stays a little stuck there. I'm not sure why, but there is some resistance there. I don't know if it is made on purpose or of or if it was an accident. Then we have the converter, and the converter is here and I did it like this like I wasn't screwing but just to take it carefully not to spill ink but this is not a screw in place converter it's just a regular one that you push in so this pen is quite big it is I would say this is a heavy pen or a pen on the heavier side but it is very well made, very, there is a lot of attention to the details and the, the pattern of the, the grain of the wood is almost invisible so you, you could, you, you can see it if I do it like this, you can see a little bit of it but you could be fooled to think this is uh, some kind of plastic it is not and it is. It has this warm feel to the to, to the touch. It's quite heavy, I would say. Just for comparison with other pens, I have here a Montegrappa Hard Fortuna Hardwood. This is the dark teak color, and the the wood is quite similar in color, but this one is much shinier. And I have also here a Graf von Faber Castell classic uh, made of ebony also and that has some close features to it. It also has a very long metal uh, uh, section and it is a, a very nice interesting pen. However, this one has a number 5 nix, uh, nib and this one has a number 6 nib. I think the, the pen is really, really beautiful. But let's talk about the size of the pen. The pen here is compared with the Parker Centennial to fold the big red that I usually show the pen next to. It is of the same size, maybe, yes, I would say the same size, a little bit narrower, but not much. And of course, if it is the same size of a Dufold, it is the same size of a Lamy Safari. When we uncap, the pen and put them next to each other we will see that the nib is similar to the nib of the the Parker do fold in size but it is just a little little bit shorter this one I'm I th I'm not sure if I said it was a Lamy Safari it's not it is a Lamy LX but the size is the same so it doesn't really matter that much. What I have to say more about this, this is very comfortable, a very nice size to hold. I don't find this slippery at all. It takes international sized converter or cartridge, so it's very good. It could post, 
I think, but it would become very back heavy, but I didn't try to do it because I think I could ruin the, 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 the wood, I could scratch it with the threads on the cap, inside the cap, so I didn't do it, and because the pen is not mine, it is on loan. So, this is the outside of the pen and also the inside, now let's see the performance. And here we are with the pen and paper, and let's see how it does perform. So, the pen that we are using is the Jacques Herbin Caravelle Ebony. The paper is the usual Rodia dot so French paper and an English ink this is the Parker Quink Green and the nib of this one is 18 karat gold nib with a medium uh, grade so this pen writes beautifully and very very smooth if you like feedback this is not the pen that you will love because it has almost no feedback. It's very, very, very smooth. It is quite wet. I would say regularly wet for um, medium nib, so it will not uh, lose a lot of ink on the paper. It is not, this is not a skip, I lifted the pen too much. If you write with no pressure, it writes well with medium line and you have no real line variation. But if you try to press it a little bit, you can have some line variation, but you have to be careful because these pens are not meant to be flex. So, like, like there, you can have some line variation and some shading on your rings if that is something that you're looking for. Another thing, the reverse writing, because some people enjoy to have different writing. Okay, this way it is not scratchy, but it is feedbacky, definitely, and I think you can hear it. But it is just feedback, not scratchy. It, I think it was tuned right on the other side, it's not by accident. And it writes with a very fine line, like uh, an extra fine, and this is the medium, and this is what you get when you press it a little bit harder. So, the pen is really nice, in my opinion, and there is some last detail that I want to talk about, and it's not just a detail, is the price of this pen. This pen costs 565 euros, so it is quite an expensive pen. I think uh, you will buy this pen if you really like it, but maybe you have for an everyday writer pen, you'll have some other options of a good quality writing instrument without this kind of premium price. However, is the pen good? Yes, it is. It writes well with a good ink flow. The nib is beautiful, the pen is beautiful, there is lots of good craftsmanship here, but as I said, it is quite expensive. It, depend, it really depends on you. Some people may be willing to spend this kind of money in a pen, and in my opinion, this is a very classy pen, if you can afford it, to have it as a gift to someone special. I really think this is a beautiful gift for someone. And it's not that common as some other very well-known brands that everyone gives gifts to someone important. So, this is all I had to show you. I have to thank you in first place for to, to Mr. Appleboom for sending me this pen for review. Thank you for trusting me with this more expensive pen, and I'm smearing the, the ink. Thank you for that. I also want to thank you all for watching my channel, and if you like this 
content that I make, please don't forget to like and subscribe and keep coming back for more videos like this one. This is all for today. I see you next time. Bye.